currently the director of the Environmental Exposure Unit and the Allergy Research Unit here at Kingston General Hospital. I'm also an Associate Professor of Medicine here at Queen's University and I'm the Chair of the Division of Allergy and Immunology within the Department of Medicine. I'm a clinician scientist, so 75% of my time is dedicated to conducting research, So, but I also have other things that I do. Obviously, I conduct a clinical practice. Uh, I have an outpatient allergy immunology practice, which helps to keep me grounded in terms of what are patients still suffering from, what kind of treatments need to be brought to help with allergic conditions, and I'm also involved in medical education here at Queen's University as well. Allergy Research Unit at Kingston General Hospital is involved in a number of different aspects of allergy research. Obviously our flagship is the EEU, but we also do studies looking at direct nasal allergen challenge to study allergic rhinitis, as well as we have a birth cohort actually that follows women and their babies from birth looking at predictors of future allergic disease in newborns that can be picked up at the time of delivery. First and foremost is our track record. We've established this facility back in the late 1980s and have been continuing to do studies since that time. Secondly, we're located within the confines of a hospital and all of the other facilities currently in North America are not within a hospital. So we have enhanced safety as a result of that. Thirdly, we're currently the only facility that has an academic affiliation for us, particularly it's Queen's University here in Kingston, and we think that adds a level of, of rigor and scientific importance that sets us apart from the other uh, EEU-type facilities that are currently available. In the Environmental Exposure Unit in particular, we've studied the onset of action and efficacy of almost every antihistamine that's currently available on the Canadian market. We've also investigated a number of novel compounds that never did make it to market because they didn't quite work. We've also looked at nasal corticosteroids, we've looked at non-pharmacologic treatments for allergic conditions, and as well we've evaluated various immunotherapies or disease-modifying treatments to show how, whether or not they're working and ready to come into the Canadian market for a treatment in the future. We can have as few as five participants, up to as many as 150 participants without impacting on our ability to deliver controlled, equal levels of pollen throughout the entire seating facility. The most comfortable level, obviously, is one around 100 and 110 to 120 participants per exposure uh, session, but we do have that capability to contract and expand if needed, depending on the requirements of the study. things that I think is most positive about conducting trials using, a, uh, using the EEU is that we will always give you a consistent result. Our results have been reproducible when we redo the exact same study all over again using different participants in different years. We've been able to show that we give a clean signal and a clear-cut answer as to whether or not your novel treatment works or doesn't in this very controlled facility. There isn't a question of, oh, maybe drug A didn't work compared to placebo because there wasn't any pollen. We guarantee those types of conditions, and sponsors have perhaps been disappointed when their novel compound didn't work, but they're quite grateful for the fact that a clear signal came out that perhaps they should look in a different direction. Conversely, when a drug obviously is efficacious and does work well, then you also have a clear signal in that direction. And in my experience in dealing with companies, that's been one of the things that they value the most about the studies that they've conducted here at our facility. So we do a number of studies that don't involve the environmental exposure unit. We do studies of direct nasal allergen challenge of smaller numbers of participants because not all studies require 100, and pe 100 plus people to answer the question that the particular industry sponsor is looking to answer. So we can do smaller numbers of patients in a direct nasal allergen challenge model and if need be we can either do that here locally at KGH or we can tap into a network of researchers that I've established and we've developed what's called the Allergic Rhinitis Clinical Investigator Collaborative. I head this up with Helen Neighbor at McMaster University and it's a network of research across all of Canada who can study allergic rhinitis using that type of model.
Our core blood cohort is really quite interesting. It offers the ability for people in the community who don't have allergies to participate in important allergic research. So essentially, if you're a woman who's giving birth here in Kingston, we invite you to participate by donating core blood and having that core blood banked and analyzed in future compared to the outcomes of the children with respect to allergic disease or not having allergic disease. And we're hoping to identify biomarkers that are present as early as delivery that will tell you whether or not that child will develop an allergic condition later in life. The easiest and most direct way to contact us in any way about the EEU is through our website. It's really straightforward, www.eeu.on.ca. Anyone and everyone can get us that way.